Good morning everyone, welcome to the Restore Livestream. It feels like a few weeks since I've been here with you. Uh, we've been uh, kind of expanding our group of people that we're using on the live stream. Hopefully you're really enjoying the variety, but now it's back to me. Um, we're kicking off a new series today, but it's kind of linked to our last one. So our last series, uh, we were looking at Ezekiel 37, which is a word that we feel that uh, God has given us for this year. So at various points uh, during the course of the year, I suspect we'll lean back into that word, because if it is a word for a year, we want to keep it uh, kind of centre stage in our thinking right the way through the year. But one of the key bits of uh, that, uh, that story in Ezekiel 37 is the whole fact that uh, there's a moment that God breathes on the uh, body and uh, the bodies come back to life and then an army is created. Malcolm was speaking about the church being an army last week. Um, but the key part of the word that was prophesied over Restore for 2024 was the fact that God was going to breathe in a new way over us as a church. And that would be what would create the year of activation uh, that we're believing and trusting God for in 2024. Because of that, we felt like uh, as we move on from Ezekiel 37, it would be good to spend the next few weeks just looking at the work of the Spirit. And we said this a number of times, so you probably already know it, but I will remind you anyway. In Hebrew, the same word that is used for breath is the word that we would use for wind, which is the word equally you can use as spirit. So when it talks about God breathing onto the army and bringing them back to life, really what it, how you could interpret that is God fills them with his spirit and that's what brings them back to life. In the same way as, as uh, we can carry the presence of God, we can know the breath of God in us when we invite the spirit of God to come and fill us. So over the next few weeks, we're going to do a series that we're calling The Spirit Speaks. If that sounds familiar, then uh, you'll recognize it from last summer where we kind of did the first part of that and we used uh, some weeks looking at different gifts of the Spirit, looking at the working of the Holy Spirit, looking at uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, first time being filled with the Spirit. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to revisit some of that stuff. And the whole idea is that we can go deeper in our understanding of the work of the Spirit and experiencing the work of the Spirit in our lives. And so I'm going to kick off uh, the Spirit Speak series today, and I'm going to talk about the whole concept of hearing God. Hearing God. One of the things we know in the Bible is uh, right at the very start, when God wants to create the world, he creates it by speaking a word. And words have a creative power within them. And uh, we know, therefore, that God speaks because he started everything with a word. We know that Jesus was God's final word. He was kind of the word of God summed up in a man. And uh, there's a verse in Psalms that talks about the fact the heavens declare the glory of God. And so actually God is speaking all the way around uh, through creation and God wants to speak into our lives. You know, what we believe uh, being a Christian is, is, is not just a title we put on our lives, but actually it's an entry into a relationship with our Heavenly Father. And it would be a weird uh, relationship, wouldn't it, with your dad if you never ever spoke to him. Now I know for some of us maybe that has been our experience and it won't have been a, a good and a positive one in our life. Good relationship means that you talk to one another and quite often I think when we think about prayer we think about me talking to God. You know I've got my list of things that I, uh, I'm going to bring before God um, but actually if I'm in a relationship with God then God probably wants to speak back to me. And I can give him my concerns and kind of my wish list or my desires. But maybe God wants to speak into those. Maybe God wants to reshape them. Maybe God wants to guide me in terms of the pathway into those things. Um, but hearing from God uh, feels a little bit unusual. It feels different from the norm. And hearing from God can take a little bit of practice. And so uh, what I want to do today is talk about some of the ways that we can hear from God in the hope that we can all have a go at listening to God. And not just today at the end of the live stream, but actually over this season, let's practice hearing from God and see if we can get, uh, see if we can grow in our confidence, in our ability to hear from God. Because God, I know that God would love to speak to every person tuning in today and speak personally because he knows you uniquely. He knows that it says in the Bible, it, he knows the number of hairs on your head. He, uh, you are fashioned according to God's design and he wants you to know that 
you are loved by him, but you're known by him, that, you, that he is the God who sees, the first uh, description of God in the Bible in, in Genesis, uh, I think it's chapter 16, uh, the first full name that's given to God is the God who sees, and God sees you today, God knows you today, and God wants you to hear his voice. So I'm going to start by reading a story from the Bible about hearing the voice of God. I think that's always a good way of understanding uh, any topic, uh, see what the Bible says about it. And I'm going to read a story from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3. So it's a story in the Old Testament, and it's a story that uh, the Israel, God's people, have kind of lost their ability to hear from God, and they're not doing well because of it. And I think the reality is, if we lose our confidence in hearing from God, or we distance ourselves in relationships, so we disconnect from what God is speaking to us, then we won't bear the fruit that God wants to bring in our lives. So 1 Samuel chapter 3, I'm going to read, uh, it's 11 verses, just going to make a few points on that, and then I'm going to talk about the practicalities about how we can hear from God in our everyday life. The, the story says this, it says, The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, Eli was the high priest at the time, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realised that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling us at the other time, Samuel. Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. The story goes on from there, but uh, I, I think it's a really interesting story because as I say, um, it happens at a time that Israel have distanced themselves from God. And Eli was the high priest, so he was the, the top of the whole priest kind of chain. He was the one who, who should have been closest to God and the one who should have been most attentive to the voice of God. But it says right at the very start in verse 1, it says, The word of the Lord were rare, was rare, there were not many visions. And then it carries on and it says about Eli, it says his eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see. And the truth is, Eli had lost his ability to hear what God was doing. And so Eli, in a sense, was uh, fumbling around in the dark and physically his eyes weren't able to see. But I think that's because spiritually he'd lost his connection with God. You know, one of the things that Jesus challenged the uh, Pharisees on is he said they were blind guides of the blind. In other words, they'd lost their ability to hear and discern what God was speaking, and the nation was suffering because of it. I look at the state of our nation today, and I wonder whether we're in the place that we are because we've lost our ability to hear the voice of God and to follow the wisdom of God. And so it feels like we're groping around in the dark, and it feels like our leaders do not know how to solve the situation. Well, maybe it's because we've uh, lost our connection with what God is wanting to speak into our nation, and uh, the wisdom that he's wanting to lead us by um, in, this, uh, in, in this season, in, in this time. The encouragement, though, in verse 3, is it says, The lamp of God had not yet gone out. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. So even in a difficult situation, even in a bleak situation, God was still at work. Sometimes today I look out at the world and, uh, and it's heartbreaking to see the challenge and the difficulties going on, the brokenness that we see in society. But you know, God is still at work. 
and we should have confidence in that. One of the jobs of the uh, priest was to uh, keep a lamp burning in the uh, Holy of Holies, in, in the place that uh, he would go to connect with God. And the lamp of God was still burning. And you know, God still, even though his people had drifted a long way away, God was still wanting to speak and God was still wanting them to listen. And so he calls to Samuel. At this point, Samuel would have been a little boy. It's interesting, the backstory of Samuel, because Samuel was a miraculous answer to prayer for his mother, Hannah. And uh, uh, you can read about that earlier in, uh, at the beginning of 1 uh, Samuel. Uh, but the name Samuel means God hears. And God heard his mother's prayer. And Samuel was an answer to that. And maybe not surprisingly, out of that backstory, um, God reaches out because he wants Samuel to hear what he's speaking. And three times in this story, as I say, as Samuel is a little boy, um, God was speaking to him and calling to him. And uh, Hannah, one of the things that Hannah did as a, as a love offering, as, a, as, a, as an act of gratitude, was she promised that if God gave her a child, she would dedicate him to God. And so she literally gave him to the temple to uh, uh, work and serve the high priest um, as, her, as her love gift uh, back to God for the gift that he'd given her. Uh, but it was Samuel, as he was in the presence of God, that God reached out and spoke to him. And if we're going to be people who hear the voice of God, where we position ourselves becomes really important. You know, if you never go to church, if you never open your Bible, if you never tune into the live stream, if you're never around God's people, maybe you shouldn't be surprised that you don't really hear what God's speaking. There's things we can do to position ourselves so we can hear the voice of God. And it was while Samuel was in the temple, while he was in the place where they worshipped God, where they drew near to God, it was in that place that God started to speak to him. And so maybe over this season, maybe you've lost focus and, and maybe you're not sure what God is speaking to you, but maybe that's because you've lost connection. Maybe you need to change something around your positioning. Maybe you need to listen to some podcasts, some teachings from some churches. Maybe you need to prioritise the place of worship. Maybe you need to pick up your Bible again. Maybe you need to reconnect to God's people. If we position ourselves in the right place, then it's easier to hear the word of God. The other interesting thing out of this story, though, is that God speaks and Samuel doesn't recognise it as the voice of God. It's almost quite comical, really, because God speaks and calls Samuel. Samuel goes running to Eli and, and says, you called? And Eli says, I didn't. Go back to bed. We've probably all had that experience with little kids, haven't we? And then um, Samuel comes again and says, uh, it, because God calls him again, comes again to Eli and says, you called? And he says, no, I didn't. And then on the third time, Eli realises that God, so he hasn't fully lost his way. He realises that God is calling the boy Samuel. And so he says, go back and say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. In other words, God's got more specific revelation he wants to give you. God's got more understanding he wants to give you. But for Samuel, he had to learn how to recognise the voice of God. And it's easy for me to talk about hearing the voice of God. But for some of us, that's a new experience. Some of us, it's something that we're not confident in. And we need to learn uh, how to grow in that and grow in our confidence with, we, with what God is speaking, which is this, what happens to Samuel. Samuel. And Samuel, when he gets a sense, oh, God does want to speak. Oh, God is a God who speaks. Uh, he then says to God, speak now, your servant is listening. And God continues to speak. And Samuel, uh, in time, becomes a really good high priest, ends up anointing David as uh, king over Israel. Uh, but he learnt and he grew in his confidence and his ability to hear what God was speaking. And I, I feel like I just have to read verse 11 again, because I really, really like it in terms of, of, of just the phrasing of it. Um, the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. Love that. It's a great phrase, isn't it? Tingle. Um, it, it actually uh, means, means to, uh, to tingle or to quiver. In other words, I'm, I'm going to do something quite extraordinary and, uh, and it's going to be uh, quite awesome, but it's actually going to potentially be a little bit frightening as well. But I, I, I just really like that phrase. And, and, and oh, for God to do something. Maybe God does want to do something in our day that will make the ears of our nation tingle and recognise the awesomeness and the greatness of God. Now, if we look at the life of Jesus, Jesus is always our role model for how we ought to live because he's the perfect man, uh, God in uh, man. Um, one of the things we know from Jesus, Jesus says in John chapter 5, verse 19, he says, I only speak what I hear the Father saying, 
I only do what I see the Father doing. In other words, Jesus says, I know how to hear God's voice, and then I just do what God tells me to. And when we look through the Gospels, it's amazing the number of times that the Pharisees try to trick Jesus with difficult questions, uh, and yet God gives them the wisdom to kind of sidestep them, uh, which is, is, is a real gift, isn't it? Um, gives them the ability to get out of some tight corners. Equally, it's also interesting that every individual who comes to Jesus seems to get a different response. Jesus doesn't seem to have a set formula for how he heals people or how he deals with particular situations. And just as everybody's backstory is unique, Jesus' treatment of them seems to be unique. And he seems, it seems like he's able to do that because he's confident that he can hear from God. And we have peppered right the way through the gospel stories, Jesus retreating and going into the wilderness and retreating so he can hear his father for the next season. And if that's the way that Jesus lived, and I would contend that that's actually the way that God wants us to live as followers of Jesus. He wants us to have an expectation that every day he wants to speak to us. Every morning he wants to maybe say something to us about the day, that as we go through our day, maybe we're in our workplace, maybe we're in the shops, uh, we should be available and say, God, is there something you want me to say to someone around here? Is there someone that you want me to stop and talk to? Um, is there something you want to speak to me about this, this area or, or maybe about my neighbourhood? Um, and it, it's that whole element about being available. And Jesus talked quite a lot about um, being able to hear him. In John chapter 10, which, uh, when John talk, where um, Jesus talks about being the good shepherd, um, he says in it, it, he talks when he talks about the good shepherd, he says, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he's brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Jody, um, we were talking about hearing God's voice at one point and Jody, uh, one of the things, bits of research she'd done is she'd looked on YouTube and she'd looked for clips of a shepherd calling sheep's voices and she found loads of YouTube clips, hey, you've got nothing to do later, uh, Google it, look it up on YouTube. Um, but the interesting thing is sheep are really attuned to the shepherd's voice. And uh, because he's the one who leads them, he's the one that feeds them, he's the one that provides for them. And uh, they know his voice. And so as soon as the shepherd calls them, they come running. And you can find lots and lots of examples of it. In the same way, Jesus is saying, I want you to know my voice and recognize it. And I want you to be ready to run when I speak to you. In John chapter 16, he uh, talks about the Holy Spirit. When he's, he, th this whole discourse, he's talking about the fact he's going to go back to the Father in heaven. But he says he's sending his Spirit, which is God, uh, how God is with us today. He's sending his Spirit to speak to us and lead us and guide us. John 16 verse 12 says, I, I, I have much more to say to you, more than you can know, now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. In other words, Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit will speak to us and will guide us and will lead us. There's a great book by a guy called John Eldridge called Waking the Dead. I'd recommend it. John Eldridge has kind of got a ministry particularly to men in terms of rediscovering uh, a true biblical perspective on, on masculinity and uh, manhood, but also um, it, it has a great understanding that our journey with Jesus is like an adventure and that Jesus invites us into an adventurous journey with him, which actually when you read Jesus and the disciples, that's exactly what Jesus did invite the disciples into, a great uh, adventure. Sometimes it freaked them out, but they grew enormously um, because they stepped into the adventure of God. And I think it's a great um, mindset to have on Christianity. You know, I'm invited into a relationship with Jesus and then I'm invited to adventure with him into God's story and bringing God's kingdom uh, into the earth. And uh, one of the uh, paragraphs that John Eldridge writes in Waking the Dead about hearing from God is this. If you're not pursuing a dangerous quest with your life, then you don't need a guide. If you haven't found yourself in the midst of a ferocious war, then you won't need a seasoned captain. If you settled in your mind to live as though this is a fairly neutral world and you're simply trying to live your life as best you can, then you can probably get by with the Christianity of tips and techniques. Maybe. I'll give you about a 50-50 chance. 
But if you intend to live in the story that God is telling, and if you want the, li the life he offers, then you're going to need more than a handful of principles, however noble they may be. There are too many twists and turns in the road ahead, too many ambushes waiting, only God knows where, too much at stake. You cannot possibly prepare yourself for every situation. Narrow is the way, said Jesus. How shall we be sure to find it? We need God immediately. We need him desperately. And again, like I say, John Eldridge is saying that, uh, that what Jesus invites us into is a journey with him, the adventure of living with him. And because it is an adventure, because it is a battle to see the kingdom of God come, we need to be attuned to the voice of our heavenly father. So that's uh, the whole introduction in terms of why we need to hear from God. But maybe for many of us, the big question is, well, how do I do it? How do I actually hear from God? And I'm just going to detail um, really some of the ways that, uh, that I think from the Bible we can see how God speaks to us, but also uh, give you maybe some examples from how I've grown in my ability and my confidence to hear from God. Obviously, the first place to hear from God is here, the Bible, the word of God. You know, if we want to know what God thinks about issues, if we want to understand better the God story, if we want to know more of the character and the nature of God, it's all here. It's not always simple to in, in, interpret, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but sometimes it is simple and straightforward. And there's two Greek words that are used for, for the word of God in the Bible. One is the word logos, which is the overarching word of God. It's kind of the summary of, <coughs> of everything. And there's some things that we know what God thinks about um, simply because when we read the Bible, it tells us clearly. So, for example, what does God think about divorce? It says in the Bible, God hates divorce. And right the way through the Bible, we find that, uh, that God puts the first man with the first woman um, and he puts them into a lifelong marriage. And uh, so we know that God's intention is that marriage is forever. Uh, we know that God's intention is for a lifelong commitment and we know that God hates divorce. Now, there are certain circumstances it talks about in the Bible under which divorce is acceptable, but it's always God's second best. We know that clearly. Another thing the Bible says is it says um, you shouldn't murder. So we know that murder is always wrong. You know, uh, we shouldn't lie. And a uh, number of times, right the way through, in fact, in the Bible, it says very clearly that God is a God of truth. The enemy is a God of lies. And so we should have truth on our lips. We should be people of the truth. And lying is not what God wants. Being selfish and greedy and ambition. Lots of Bible verses that talk around uh, the fact that we need to uh, deal with our inner uh, motives, our inner hearts. There's lots of things. If you think, what does God think about this? What does God say about that? Actually, just by understanding the Bible or reading the Bible or asking someone to lead us through what the Bible says, we can, we can know really, really clearly. So one of the ways that God speaks is simply this. And I would encourage you, make it a regular practice to read the Bible. And I know it's not straightforward because it's not actually one book. It's 66 books put together. Uh, uh, we trust um, divinely inspired in terms of what's in that. But 66 separate books and each book has its own context. Um, and so it, it's not quite like, you know, the latest John Grisham thriller that you start there and end there. Um, then sometimes it's easier to take it bit by bit. I always recommend someone that isn't used to reading the Bible. Start with one of the Gospels. Start with uh, Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark. Luke or John, um, then maybe read the Acts of, of, uh, of the Apostles. And I'd say start just with a little bit, you know, uh, just read one story about one um, uh, thing that Jesus did each day. That will just get you into the practice of rooting yourself in the word of God. And you'll find you'll understand what God says about a whole number of issues out of that. The second Greek word that is used for the word of God, though, is the word rhema which means the word that God is speaking right here and right now. And uh, that's kind of like, like what's, God words, what's God's word to me right now? And um, for me, that will often happen that maybe I'll be reading a story of Jesus and there'll just be one phrase that kind of leaps off the page at me. There'll be something that strikes me about the story. And I've learned that that's often the Holy Spirit just taking something and speaking it into my life. And I know there's something that God wants me to remember and take away from that. And sometimes that speaks into my immediate situation. Sometimes it's God just highlighting something about his character and his nature that I need to take on board for my own personal growth. 
And sometimes somebody will be speaking on a Sunday morning and they'll be saying something and there's just like, there's just a phrase they use or there's a word they use. And it's, it's almost like it's highlighted, it stands out. And I've learned that's God speaking to me. Maybe this morning, maybe there's something that I've spoken about so far. Maybe there'll be something that I talk about in a little bit and, and it'll just kind of hit you in there. I would say that's the rhema word of God. That's God speaking to you right here, right now. And so let's become people of the word. If you don't do a daily Bible reading, um, the Bible app gives you a whole load of different reading plans you can use through the Bible. If you want to go a bit deeper and read a few chapters every day, um, I've discovered a new uh, daily plan, which is fantastic. I can't recommend it highly enough. And it's called the Bible Recap. And it's basically a year's, uh, a, a year set of daily devotions or daily reading plan to get you through the Bible in a year. It's called the Bible Recap. Um, it's, it's by a lady called Tara Lee Cobble. Um, you can find it on the internet as well and download it. But she takes you, each day you get kind of three chapters to read through and you can read through them. And then you can watch a YouTube video. There's a link to the YouTube video. And, in, and she gives you a seven minute video to watch each day. And she simply recaps through the story and she unpacks it. And so some of the difficult things we find hard to interpret. She gives some really good uh, biblical understanding of it. She's a biblical scholar. And then she ends with the God shot. Maybe this is the thing that God's speaking to you from it. I'd really recommend it. It's called the Bible Recap Tara Lee Cobble. Well, I'm really enjoying doing it at the moment. It'd be a great thing to do. Um, there's other things in the Bible, though, and they're not fully clear from what, what, uh, from, from what the Bible says. So there's some things that are really clear. There's other things that need a bit more interpretation to understand that. And that's where we need to be connected to one another and, uh, and, and help one another to unpack some of those things. So one of the key ways that God speaks is through through the word through the Bible. What are the other ways that God speaks? Well, the other ways are more experiential. So, um, so in some ways they're a bit more tricky or they need a bit more care with how we use them. So what are those ways? Well, often for me, I'll be praying about something or thinking about something and I'll just have a thought drop into my mind. It'll just be a casual thought dropped into my mind. And what I've discovered over time is that not always, but quite often, that's God speaking to me. And it'll just be almost like a random thought or a little thought that comes into my mind. I'll give you an example. The other day I was driving to work and uh, on my way, um, I had some worship playing in the car. I was just, uh, I can't say I was particularly thinking about anything. Um, but I just thought about two guys, and we used to have a little WhatsApp group where we'd pray for one another and share prophetic words. They're no longer around, uh, Restore Now, they're in other parts of the world. Um, but uh, we haven't connected for mm, a year, something like that, more. Just coming to work, and I thought, I think I should reach out to them. And, uh, and then I thought, do you know, I should ask God for a little word for them. And instantly I had two thoughts um, uh, one which I thought was for each of the guys. So when I got to work, I uh, did a voice note on WhatsApp, and I said, I was just praying for you two guys, and I felt God was saying this, and, uh, and then I said to the other one, I felt God was saying this. And um, within about four hours, I got answers from both of them back, both saying, wow, that's amazing. I've been really lonely, I've been really struggling, and I felt like I needed a connection with someone. And both of them, the words spoke exactly into their situation. Now, I could have ignored that, because for me, it was just a feeling. For me, it was just a thought. But I thought, maybe this is God, so I did something about it. And actually, it had a huge impact into their lives. And one of them then uh, said, well, I asked God for a word back for you, and gave me a word that's really, really helpful for this current season for me. But for me, it just came like a thought that came into my mind. My Chris um, has uh, uh, times that, uh, it's one of the ways that God uh, speaks to Chris often. And she's got a great story of um, being at the supermarket. And when she was at the supermarket, she's just going around with a, with a basket. Um, and she picked up some milk and she thought of someone and she thought, I think I should buy them some milk. So she bought them a two pinter of milk. And she went, paid for her shopping. Uh, on her way home, uh, she dropped it uh, in, uh, knocked on the doors, no one there. So she left two pints of milk on the floor, uh, uh, just outside the door. Um, next day, she got a call from uh, this lady who said, you didn't by any chance leave some milk on my doorstep, did you? And Chris was like, yeah. And she said, it was really amazing because I had no milk at home and I meant to buy some. And I got back really late last night. And when I pulled up, I thought, blast. I meant to get some milk and we haven't got any milk. 
And then I got out and on the doorstep was two pints of milk. Now, just a thought dropped into our mind and yet it's God speaking. And one of the ways that we can grow in our ability to hear from God is just be expectant and practice that. Say, God, is there someone you want to put on my heart right now? So many times I ring someone or message somebody just because they've come into mind and I found out it's actually been a God prompt. So why don't you ask God, God, is there someone I should contact today? God, is there somebody I should bless in some way? God, what do you think I should do? And do you know the worst thing that can happen is you pray blessing for someone and you give them a call and say, how are you? That's not going to cause too much problem. Or they get an extra bit of milk. That's not going to be a problem, is it? But if you find out it's a God thing and it's a word right when they need it or a gift right when they need it, wow, that's amazing. So sometimes it's just a thought. It's just a word drops into my mind. For me, sometimes it's an impression. And uh, by which I'll mean uh, quite often I'll be thinking about something and praying about somebody and I'll almost get like a little image in my mind or a little feeling in my mind. We were at a time of worship recently and uh, in the middle of it, um, Malcolm was leading worship, and in the middle of it I, I, I just could just almost hear a sense of thunder in the skies. And it wasn't literally thundering, it wasn't even raining. Um, but I could hear, like, in, in, in my imagination, I could feel like, like, like there was a picture of, of thunder, if you can picture thunder. Um, but I was reminded of the times in the Bible where God is on the move, and it talks about the presence of God being um, heralded by thunder and lightning. And I felt like God was just speaking, that he was on the move. And, uh, and, and in the heavens, something was rumbling, something was happening. But I just kind of had an impression and, and for me, I've, I've, I've learned over time that those impressions, those feelings are often how God works in me and through relationship. And again, I've just, just tried speaking them out. I've tried sharing them. And it's amazing how many times they've been right on target. And the more you get used to sharing them and the more you find they're on, com they're on target, then the more confident you are in, uh, in uh, speaking them out. Sometimes it's a feeling you get in your heart. You know, in Mark chapter 2, verse 8, the story when um, they, s some friends bring a paralytic to Jesus and they have to take the roof off the house to lower him down. Um, the Pharisees are really judgmental because Jesus says, um, <clears throat> your sins are forgiven to the guy. Um, uh, the Pharisees are really judgmental. And it says in Mark 2, verse 8, it says, immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. Immediately, he just had a sense in his spirit. He just felt something. And sometimes God speaks just by kind of prompting something inside. I remember, this would probably freak some people out watching this, but uh, I remember um, having a conversation with a guy one day. And we're just in the middle of the conversation, and, and, and I wasn't really thinking about anything, although obviously I was listening carefully at his words. Um, but in the middle of the conversation, I just thought, you've committed adultery. And I don't know where that came from. I just had a thought inside, thought, you've committed adultery. And I didn't stop the conversation and say, God's just spoken to me and this. But it was a really weird thing came out of nowhere. But I just held on to it. And, uh, and, and I kind of prayed into it. And uh, a couple of months later, I was in another conversation with him. And he said, actually, Ian, I've got something to tell you. And he told me he'd committed adultery. And sometimes God speaks some of those things. And sometimes he speaks them because we're, he wants us to pray into it. It's not always that we should share it. Um, but sometimes it can help us in our prayers for people and it can help us in leading people so they grow in Jesus. Sometimes you can have a physical sensation. I've done through the years a number of times, prayed around people's homes. Um, I think whenever you get a new house, a good thing to do is turn on some music, pray around, pray through the history, pray a cleansing uh, from heaven. Sometimes I've prayed around people's homes because they've had weird things happening in the house. That kind of thing does happen, you know, um, but we have the authority to cleanse and to renew things in a house. And quite often I'll walk around a house and I'll just get a feeling, just get a physical sensation. Sometimes um, I almost feel a little bit claustrophobic. I don't suffer from claustrophobia, but I feel a, a little bit claustrophobic and I just know there's something pushing in that I need to pray about and, and push back. But it's just a, a, a physical sense I get inside. And so they're all very experiential things, but they are ways that I've discovered that God works in me and God speaks to me. So one of the things that I, I, I just do is I have an expectation and a belief that maybe that is God speaking to me. It's quite a, uh, 
It's quite a casual thing. Um, in some ways, it's quite a little thing. And I know a friend as well who uh, moves a lot in terms of uh, seeing healing released to people. And often when he says to God, God, is there someone in this meeting um, that uh, needs healing for a particular condition? Often he'll have a pain in a part of his body. And uh, it's not because actually he's not well in his body, but it, it, it's how God speaks to him to say, like, I've got a pain in my knee. Oh, there's someone here who's got a pain in their knee and God wants to do this. And then he'll get maybe a feeling in his shoulder and he'll say, there's someone here who's got a feeling in their shoulder. And nine times out of 10, he's right on the money. He's right on the mark. And so it's just being more attuned to these things and understanding that maybe God's speaking in them. I guess the last thing I just want to say is how can we be sure that we're right? And that's a really good question, isn't it? And I would say, have a go. I would always encourage someone, have a go. The worst thing that can happen is people think you're a little bit weird. Um, and most of us are a little bit weird anyway, aren't we? So just have a go. Um, but I, I think there's a couple of things we can do to test what we're getting before we share it or before we act on it. Uh, number one, there's, there's what I'd call the principle of resonance. Now, there's certain musical instruments, and uh, if, uh, if they're... Um, close to um, other instruments that have the same natural frequency, they'll resonate with one another. They'll kind of come into alignment with one another. And uh, for me, sometimes someone will share something or I'll feel something. And, and do you know in a meeting, someone will share something and sometimes you think, yes, I know that's good. You just, inside, you just have a sense of natural reson resonance that, yes, that's what God's speaking. Yes, that's the heart of God. And, 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 and I've learned that's quite a good uh, marker. Sometimes someone can say something and you think, that just doesn't feel right for some reason. It just feels a bit un uncomfortable inside. And I think that's, that's how we discern in our hearts and in our spirits. And I think that's how it works. Um, I think the second thing is, is it in line with scripture? So like I said, God hates divorce. So if someone comes to you and says, I think God's told me I need to get divorced, think maybe not. Um, so, which is, again, is why we need to be people who understand the word of God or connected to people who do. So we can say, what do you think about this? Or what do you think the Bible says about it? So it has to be in line with scripture. I think the third thing I would say is, does it look and feel like Jesus? Jesus is perfect theology. Jesus is God as a man. And so if it looks like Jesus, if it feels like Jesus, if it sounds like Jesus, it's probably okay. And if it doesn't, it probably isn't. Um, Paul speaks in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 as well, the last thing. He says, um, everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement and comfort. So we should simply ask, God, will this strengthen will this encourage and will this comfort? And if it doesn't, then I'm not going to share it. Um, but if it will strengthen, encourage and comfort, then I should do it. So does it resonate with me? Is it in line with scripture? Does it feel like Jesus? And will it encourage? And then we share it. So that's a little bit about hearing from God. I trust that that's been helpful. Hopefully some tips. But do you know the rubber hits the roads when you have a go? It's fine to hear me talk about my stories, but what about you taking some steps out? What about you having your story? What about you having your adventure with God? I'm going to pray uh, right now, but why don't we ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us? And uh, why don't we make ourselves available, just like Samuel said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you're a God who speaks. Lord, thank you, Samuel discovered that you knew him and you wanted him to know you. And Lord, I believe that you want to speak to everyone that's listening this morning. And in the same way as Samuel said, speak, Lord, we're listening. This morning, Lord, we say, speak, we're listening. And Lord, is there someone that you would like us to pray for or contact today. And Lord, if there is, I pray that you'll drop their name into our mind or our heart right now. And if a name or a couple of names has come to mind, why don't you 
trusts that that's God. And just pray blessing over them. Maybe later on you want to reach out to them and say, how are you doing? Just felt that God put your name on my heart. And Lord, is there something you want me to share with them that would bless and encourage them? Maybe there's someone you should take a cake to this afternoon just because. Maybe there's someone you should take some milk to just because. Maybe there's someone they just need a card, something written down that says we love you, we're for you, we believe in you, we've missed you. If you've got a sense of something like that, I want to encourage you to act on it. Give it a go. See what happens. Amen. We're out of time. I've realised uh, it's not the shortest to talk, but you're probably used to that with me anyway. Um, but I'd really encourage you each day, why don't you just make a little bit of time, just to sit quietly, maybe make yourself a drink, sit down in your chair. Say, God, is there someone that you want to put on my heart? God, is there something I need to do to bless them? Or God, is there something you want to speak to me today? And let's make that time to be expectant for God to speak and lead and guide us. God bless you. Uh, there'll be someone back next week helping us in our journey as we go deeper in the things of the Spirit. Have a great week.